Hi there, I bought this IEMA A07 Max from AliExpress uh, a few weeks ago. I thought I would tear it down and show you what's inside and also to check whether the components inside uh, look genuine or whether they're cloned. I mean, the sound quality is very good actually. It took a little while to run it in, a few hours, but now it's fully run in. It sounds much, much better than it did when I first switched it on. I was very disappointed with it when I first switched it on. I was using this Yamaha amplifier here and the Yamaha wiped the floor with this first of all but after it's uh, run in for a few hours this actually sounds really good now. Really dynamic, really good bass and uh, yeah this is a keeper definitely because its form factor is, is very good on my bench. Um, to take this apart it's quite straightforward but um, what you could do you could actually undo these um, speaker jacks here and undo it that way but uh, I didn't want to disturb the hot melt glue here so I since I've got a good soldering iron now I thought I'd just uh, desolder it and I've marked the negatives here so Obviously, if it's on like this, the negative wires are marked so I don't uh, get them mixed up. <clears throat> um, obviously, the, the, the main chip, uh, TP, uh, TPA3, uh, double five two, I, I can't remember, if you're honest with you, but um, yeah, it's the chip that's supposed to give 300 watts uh, RMS output, which I, I don't believe for a second, um, using a 48 volt supply. I think that's highly um, wrong. Uh, it would probably give uh, that sort of output for um, a millisecond and then completely fry. So I don't think that's right, that claim, but you know, who in their right mind would want uh, 300 watts for their living room really standard living room or for their test bench which is what this is for uh, it gives a perfectly good output I'm not sure what the output is but I mean 10 20 watts is absolutely plenty but it sounds good that's the main thing it really sounds good I like the fact that you have the on off switch integrated here you see it's quite good and it seems a reasonable quality switch this as well sealed switch um, so yeah, when you're taking it apart, you can see these countersunk screw holes there. Obviously you've got vents there for cooling. These countersunk screws that go in there, these black ones here, they're very tight. All of these screws, they are, and there's five of them in total. Um, they're all uh, Allen key, uh, two millimeter metric. Uh, the, other, the other two, one in each side here and then you have a like a self tapper allen key for this one at the back as well this is the uh, subwoofer out although there's no independent control for that but i don't know perhaps they might be just about enough room to put some sort of trim pot somewhere so that you can make this adjustable as an output but i don't intend to use a subwoofer on this i'm just using my standard Dali Zensel one speakers here which sound excellent actually really good I just sold some uh, other speakers that I bought some uh, Dali Lector but I decided to stick with these Zensels rather than the Lector I've sold the Lector now because these Zensels um, <clears throat> they're a bit smaller form factor and they sound sound pretty good so there we go the lectors were good as well, but I think the Zensa had the edge on the high frequencies. Here you see the big chunk of metal here, which is obviously the, the chip, uh, chip amps in there. I might take this off at some point and check whether the heat sink compound is good and plentiful on there. Um, maybe even uh, put some on this back plate so it where it comes in contact with a the case there um, to make a better um, transition there. 
Um, so there we go, there we have it. Um, easy to take apart. Everything here in here looks genuine to me. Looks well assembled. Um, now these are the things that you can upgrade. Let me just zoom in on that a bit. There we go. These are NE5532s. I think these are genuine, although some of that printing looks a bit dodgy. I might just put some that I've got in stock in there just to check them. Sound good enough at the moment. Um, I came across a video on YouTube and it's uh, a guy who tried a whole load of um, top of the range sort of op amps. He tried Muses, he tried um, LHYs, he tried um, Bursons, uh, he tried Linear Technology op amp and um, he also tried Oracle, Oracle 2. I listened to all of those um, test tracks. Uh, he had about five different um, tracks that he used, different styles of music. And after a few hours of deliberation, I came to the conclusion that um, if you wanted to upgrade this, probably one of the best ones to use, I would say, was uh, Oracle 2 um, Dual Op Amp. That sounded quite good quite a good bang for the buck as an upgrade for this so I've ordered some today and I'm going to try them um, the LHYs were extremely good sounding but uh, they were actually uh, the they actually stood up quite a way it was like two vertical cards together and it wouldn't work in this because there's not enough not enough room there for them to fit you'd have to operate the amp with this case off and it's just not worth it I mean you know they, they did sound very very good but you know they all sound good these even these NE 5532 sound good another thing that is mentioned in the video and what people sometimes do is parallel these NE 5532s or any op amp for that matter they just solder another one directly on top so they're stacked uh, too deep and apparently the sound quality uh, improves massively and I heard the sound quality on these and it, it was improved quite a lot um, but the thing is um, as a side note when you stack them on top like that one on top of the other one they get very hot and if they're getting very hot like that then they must be um, drawing quite a lot of current on the power supply so I'm not very satisfied with that result. Probably if uh, the power rails were decoupled, um, it probably would resolve that. But anyway, after listening to all the tests and everything, I thought that the Oracle was a pretty good one. The Muses obviously sounded good as well, but they're extremely expensive. I mean, the Muses, you pay about £75 per chip uh, so that's 150 pounds per chip and this whole amplifier was 50 quid so you know it doesn't make any sense to me you may as well spend out on a more expensive amplifier in the first place so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try the oracles in there because they just plug them in and take them out if i don't use them in this don't end up using them in this i can probably use them in um, um, cd modification you know obviously i'm still doing the cds i've got my cdx there I've got my mission there that I bought. I'm going to use that um, to test other things. I've got another CDX there that's waiting to be sorted out. I'll probably do that tomorrow. So yeah, this is uh, all good fun to modify these things. And I'll, I'll make another video if I can modify it well. And obviously I'll be offering that as a service if anyone wants these modified. But this is genuine and I paid 50 something pounds for it. And it is well worth it, I think. Well worth the money. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And um, please like and subscribe. I only need about 20, 25 or so subscribers more till I hit the thousand, which means I can start monetizing on my videos. So that will be very helpful at the moment. Thanks very much, much for watching. And if you have anything that needs repairing, get in touch with me. Thanks a lot.